Hello and welcome everyone to my channel Code with Ease by Varsha. So today we are going to discuss about the second solid principle, the O of solid, that is open closed principle. So in the picture, as we can see, there's a child who is trying to build blocks. Uh, is trying to build blocks and trying to build a structure out of the blocks. So when a child is trying to build a block, let's say he's trying to build a house out of the given blocks. Uh, so if on day one the child started to build one part of the uh, one part of the house and then day two when he or she is going to come back and construct rest of the parts of the house is is the child going to come back and modify whatever she has made in the day one in the day one structure or she is going to add on to whatever she has already made the point i'm trying to make is when i'm creating a structure if i made let's say the pillars today and tomorrow i will come and make the other parts let's say the windows or the doors so i don't have to touch the pillars tomorrow the pillars are done and dusted i've constructed them on day one tomorrow i'll come back and lay the bricks for the rest of the structure so that is how we construct or build any structure so in open closed principle the simple point it is trying to make is if you have built something already don't try to and if you build something already, if you want to add new features to it, don't try to modify the existing structure. Keep on adding to it, keep on adding the new functionality without affecting what you've already built. So what is the definition of open closed principle? That software entity should be open for extension, but closed for modification. So like I gave the example of the building of a structure by the child, if she has already built the pillars already, she doesn't have to come back and modify the pillars to build rest of the parts of the house. In simple words, once a class or module is designed, it is okay. You want to extend the class, you want to create the child classes, you want to add new features to it, which is fine. You are okay to do that. But don't go back and start modifying what you've already built. Don't go back and start modifying the source code. Okay, so open closed principle in a way encourages the use of uh, inheritance, like I said, the child class and parent class relationship. You extend your base class, create child classes out of it, override functionality, add new features. It's okay. But the one rule that you have to follow is you add new features without breaking existing functionality. So, you, so the child doesn't need to break a part of the pillar to construct rest of the parts of the house. So that is the point which we are trying to make. It is okay to be extended, but don't modify the source code. So what's an example? Let's see. So let's take a look at the example where the open closed principle is being violated. So we'll take again a file manager class, but this time we'll take a different method. Let's say I want to open file by giving the name of the file and the type of the file. And here we have just written the conditional logic to check if it is a text file or a PDF or a JPG. Accordingly, we'll open the required file based on the extension that is given. Now, what are the problems in this code? Tomorrow, if I want to add different types of file, let's say I want to add uh, a doc file. I will do, yeah, add a XML file, YAML file. So I have to keep on adding if else conditions to this. So why is this violating the open closed principle? Because I am extending my file manager class. I am adding new features to the file manager class, but I am modifying the file manager class at the same time. I have to come back to this class and modify it again, which is not a good thing to do. That is not a good practice. And it is clearly a violation of open closed principle. So now let's see how can we fix this code to make sure that it doesn't violate the open closed principle. So for doing that, what we are going to do is we are going to create separate files for different uh, extensions like text file opener, PDF file opener, JPG file. So these are separate classes. Tomorrow, if I need a XML file opener or a doc file opener, I create a separate class itself. That is number one. Second thing is it is trying to implement an interface called file opener. Interface is nothing but it is giving one common method. Instead of I having a method like uh, open text file, open PDF file, I don't have to define my own implementation of the method. I have to just override whatever name of the method is already given by the interface. And by overriding that, I will be giving my own implementation of opening the respective files, text file or a PDF file. So clear separation of concern is also given over here because now it is not just adhering to OCP, open closed principle, but it's also following the SRP principle. I'm having single responsibility. Okay. Uh, so yeah, like tomorrow, if I have to create different types of file, I'll create different classes for that. So I don't have to come back to the main class, like the file manager class to modify. And on the right hand side, we have the file manager class again. Over here, it is a very generic uh, statements are given over here. First, it's creating a map of the name of the file and the file opener class. And then in the constructor, it is creating a hash map. So hash map, as we know, we use this data structure, which 
stores the key and value pairs. The key over here will be the type of extension and the value over here will be whatever the file you want to open. This part of the code can also be made generic but it is just like a very simple example given over here. So tomorrow if I am adding a new file, right, I don't have to touch this class. Of course, I have to come here and add this extension in the hash map, but this logic can also be abstracted out. But yeah, that is the point we are trying to make over here that tomorrow if I am coming over here, this open file uh, method that is uh, inside this file manager, it is only going to do a get on this hash map, which is having all the names of the new uh, classes names. It is going to have the names of the new classes and it is just that it is going to based on the extension, it is going to call whatever classes object it needs to. So in this way, first we saw an example where the open close principle was being violated and now we saw how did we fix it by creating separate classes, number one, by creating an interface which will define a common method and number three, modifying the file manager class in a way so that it is not hard coded or hard binded to any type of file, it is just having a generic method, the file and the file type and it is calling the respective instance of the class it needs to call uh, in, the, in the open file method. So in this way, that's a wrap on today's video. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next video where we discuss the L of solid, which is Liskov substitution principle.